Good. Fine. Y'all ready? Kala Yahawa, or by Hashem, or by Shiyak, Yahawa Shah. This is 2nd Ezra 16, verse 1. Bring it out. Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. Right? Woe be unto thee, Egypt and Syria. Hey, so, hey, according to the Bible, uh, uh, Babylon and Egypt is so called America, man. We can prove that throughout the scriptures, but go ahead. Like America is a mixing, so America is a mixing of different, different countries, man. Because we gotta understand, America went through all countries and stole their culture, right? Stole their culture and brought it back here. That's why we. That's why I always go over Baal, Baal Peor, and all of these Canaanite, Hittites, parasites. All these gods are here, right? And that's why the Lord tell us. That's why we look at Deuteronomy seven and we can still apply this today because these gods are still here. Gird up yourselves with cloths of sack right? and hair. Hey, right, so what do you do when you gird up yourself with sack, sack, sackcloth? It's a sign of mourning, man. Go ahead. Bewail your children. Right, you hear that? Y'all hear what the Bible says? Say it, read it again. Bewail your children. Right. And so, be sorry. Hey, so one thing for sure is the Most High God judges children also. Understand that. This ain't no game. Judgment is coming. I know y'all know we living in the last days. We're not out here preaching this Bible for no reason. Judgment is coming upon the men, women, and children that do not hearken to the Bible. Go ahead. For your destruction is at hand. Right, go ahead. A sword is sent upon you. Right. And who may turn it back? A fire is sent among you. And who may quench it? Right, so when the Lord sent these plagues, which he is, right? The Lord is sending the plagues. Well, the, you know, one thing, what was we talking about? Don't get comfort, don't get comfortable. Just because you comfortable don't mean that these plagues are not coming to pass because they take time to grow. Everything takes time to grow, even the Most High God's doctrine. Read that. This is the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 3. Yeah. Yeah. But what if some did not believe? Right, because a lot of people don't believe us. They look at us as niggas with Bibles in our hand. That's it. Bro, we bringing out the words in totality. These brothers is bringing out scriptures and breaking them down. Every scripture they bring out, they breaking it down. It ain't like we just reading the whole chapter and saying that's what God said. We actually breaking these scriptures down, but go ahead. But what if some did not believe, right? So their unbelief make the faith of God without without effect, right? God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. And that's the same thing the apostle said in Acts chapter 5. Let God be true and every man a liar. Every man, woman, and child out here is a liar when it comes to this book, man. Right, now get to Deuteronomy now. Unless you got something else. Get to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 32 and 2. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 and verse 2. Yo. 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 My doctrine shall drop as the rain. Right. My speech shall distill as the dew. Right. As the small rain upon the tender earth and as the showers upon the grass. Hey, and I love bringing out this scripture because it helps me give me understanding. Just because you don't like the plagues are here. They just need time to grow. The most high doctrine, what's in this book? Lamentations, warnings, and woes. It, but it takes time to grow so it can be, like we read, no turning back from it. The Lord is already making these things grow, man. Even with the, the RFID chip, what we call the MOTB, is growing. I send articles in the chat to show the brothers all the time. It's slowly progressing. And it's going to be no turning back. When they throw out the dollar, you can't turn back no more. We have to deal with it at that point. That's when we become pilgrims on the earth, right? And that's why we have to prepare ourselves because the Lord is establishing grace right now and allowing us to prepare ourselves just by saying this. He's saying it's, it takes time. Just like grass, rain falls on the grass, that takes time to grow. A couple of weeks later, you know, it comes to your ankles. A couple of weeks later, it comes to your knees, like my grass growing right now, right? Uh, was that it on that? All right, Isaiah, all right, go ahead. This is... Habakkuk 2 verse 3. Bring it out. For the vision is yet, yet for, for an appointed time. time. Hey, start at 1. Verse 1. I will stand upon my watch. Right. And set me upon the tower. Hey, and that's what we're doing. We're a watchman of the most high. We are a watchman of the most high God, man. And he said, Habakkuk said, I'm going to stand and watch on the tower. And that's what we do. That's why we put these articles in the chat so that we can have knowledge of it and bring it out at camp for the people, whether they hear or whether they forbear, man. We know our people are rebellious, but at the end of the day, our job is to come out here and show them. Go ahead. Hey, CB, CB, uh, DC. It is it goes into digital currency, man. That's what's coming. Right. Go ahead. And we'll watch to see what he will say unto me. Right. 
and what I shall answer when I am reproved. Right. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon table that he may run that readeth it. Right. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. Right. So you heard that? At the end it's going to speak and everybody else is going to be confounded with, with these visions that's in this, these scriptures, man. It's a scary thing that's in this Bible. It's nothing to play with. This Bible is nothing to play with. We see people shaking their head. They laugh. You know, they say things like they up there preaching the Bible, but at the end of the day, y'all gonna be some fearful people when at, at the end, where it, what it's speaking about right here. Go ahead. But at the end, it shall speak, right? And not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. That's what we're doing. We cannot wait for these plagues to come. So, hey, at the end of the day, we can say the Lord was right, not us. The Lord was right. Because we know they coming. We talking about in, in, a, in a higher rate, man. We know they coming. And we, we ready for it, man, mentally, because we never get physically ready for it, right? That's why niggas is carrying guns, thinking that they're going to be able to get through these plagues with their guns. And when I say niggas, I mean Edomites. They're literally stocking up on guns. i seen a video where they literally going to the church and having a priest bless their weapons. Like, what are they going to do for you? That's Roman Catholic stuff. That's what they used to do. They used to put anoint, uh, anointed oil on their swords and thinking that they was blessed, man. But that's not the case. Ain't nothing going to be able to save you. Nothing if you don't have the most high God. Because it's going to be angels working these miracles. Let's go to Revelation 7 and 1 right quick and prove it. It is four angels ready to tear up this whole earth right now, man. And they probably just floating in the sky. You can't see them, of course. I need to go uh, protest the trend in the bathrooms they got over there. That's what pissed me off. Yeah, well, that's what I do. They got the trans and the bathroom right down there. Go protest that shit. What you think about that? Yeah, well, I'm telling you, y'all out here holding it down, right? Yeah. Go protest that bullshit over there. You believe in the Bible? Come on, homie. I'm telling you where the problem is right over there. They got trans in the bathroom. I appreciate that. Go over there and preach. You know what I'm saying? The whole side, right? Yes. Yeah. My man, know me. Trust me. Oh, you already know you're an Israelite? An Israelite? Yeah. yeah, brother. I know all that. I'm just telling you. I'm talking to the homies right now. I'm just saying they got trans in the bathroom. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, some but I wanted to talk to you that for a second. Is cool. Roger, hey, you're doing hey, the right thing. How do you know? Don't. I can't talk to you. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. All right, so you know that you're going to make sure. Y'all got the white folks out there kissing your feet yet? Y'all ain't coming hard enough. You got to come harder. Thank you. Yes, I'll holler at you. Yeah, okay. I already know. I already know. All right, read that. Revelation 7 and 1. This is Revelation 7 verse 1. Bring it out. And after these things, I saw four angels right? standing on the four corners of the earth, right? holding the four winds of the earth. Hey, so what is those four winds? Jeremiah 51 and 1. That's talking about destruction. What is a woman going to be protected from those destroying wind? It's not talking about literal wind. We feel wind now. It's talking about, it's symbolic. The scriptures is like, it's a uh, jigsaw puzzle. And only the elect can unlock it, right? But, go ahead. Holding the four winds of the earth, right? that the wind should not blow on the earth, right? nor on the sea, yep. nor on any tree. Right? And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. Right? And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. So you understand that? It's four angels right now, floating, waiting to bring forth the destruction, man. They probably laughing at all these people right now. Like they have no idea what's about to hit them. Go ahead. Okay, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 66 and verse 15. Bring it out. For behold, the Lord will come with a fire and with uh, his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Right. So this scripture proves and makes his statement legitimate when he said this is not a regular wind. He said he's going to rebuke his people with flames of fire like a whirlwind. So understand that, back to you. Hey, that tempest and that blasting. But before that, hey, the scriptures talk about you being punished after death, right? So you have a two, two part punishment that you have to go through. Jacob's trouble, and then you have to worry about the lake of fire, man. Which is sad because a lot of people are still gonna be reserved to the lake of fire, man. They're gonna have to go through all that Jacob's trouble and they still gonna be reserved for the lake of fire. That's a scary ass thing to go through. Scary. Yeah. Uh, I got one of Psalms. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 11 and verse 6. Bring it out. Yeah. Upon the wicked, he shall rain snares. 
fire and brimstone and the horrible tempest shall be the portion of their cup, right? So what he said again, he said it's gonna be a tempest. It's gonna be fire and a tempest upon everybody on this earth that's wicked, right? Let me finish that out. It says, this shall be the portion of their cup. And like Captain the Bar always go into, everyone has a cup. Everybody is given they, they lot or they portion. And it's not no way that you can, the Lord can give you a cup, whether it be good or for bad. It's not no way you can take the cup and say, I'm not drinking. You have to, because your spirit ain't stronger than the Most High God's spirit. You're not strong enough to say, no, I'm not eating that. No, I'm not drinking that. Hey man, for every unrighteous dealing that you, your forefathers, your family have did on earth, there is a recompense, man, because the Lord, he documented it with an iron pen, with a, with a pen of diamond. Right back to you. By the, hey, by the angels, man. Dumb. People think they be getting away with what they going, with uh, what they doing, but Sirach 16, Sirach chapter 5, it breaks that down. The Lord see everything, man. And the Jeremiah 17 that he just brought out. Dumb. Right? So go ahead. Read that 13 and 11. This is Isaiah 13 verse 11. Bring it out. And I will punish the world for their evil. Right? So this ain't happened yet. The, the world does not see that they're being set up to be punished. Right. Right? That's why Esau moving like that. That's why Esau talking about a pandemic. That's why Esau talking about food shortages. That's why Esau talking about the mark of the beast. But these people don't even know what the hell the mark of the beast is. To even be, to, they can't even register it. That's why it's going to hit them like a Mack truck, man. It's going to hit them hard. Right? Go ahead. And the wicked for their iniquity, right? And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. Hey, who is the most proudest people on earth, man? Americans. Why do you think they have that term, proud to be an American? Right, go ahead. And will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible, right? I will make a man more precious than fine gold. Right, and that's, hey, that's the hopeful elect. That's the men that the Lord set up on the highways and byways to do for his work. No, we don't care what people say about us, man. We care what the most I say about us. And as long as we in his truth doing his work, bro, we don't we don't give a damn what nobody else say, man. Really. But go ahead. Even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Right? Mystical gold is what they call it. Go ahead. Therefore, I will shake the heavens. Hey, this is just like in Harkness Theater where they just come and drop their hands off and just smash off. Go ahead. And the earth shall remove out of her place. Right? And that's talking about what the brother just went over. The, the chariot's coming. Because not only just them nukes is going to hit, yeah, how is Shah is going to use them chariots to help progress it, to help make it that much worse? This whole country is going to be on fire, man. And don't forget about uh, Yellowstone National Park. With that that uh, volcano, they said that volcano just alone can can uh, destroy the whole America. Yellow Park, Yellow, uh, Park National, uh, Yellowstone National Park. Uh, uh, go ahead. In the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. And it shall be as the chaste robe, right? And as a sheep that no man taketh up, right? They show every man turn to his own people. Every man, hey, our objective is to come out here and uplift our people and condemn this wicked society each and every time, right? When we do, we can do lessons on charity, brotherhood. We do live lessons about that. But every time we come out here, we're trying to ruin the people's day. Why? Because they hate God. So we're gonna ruin your day, man, straight up. We don't give a damn if they like it or not. Go ahead. And flee everyone into his own land. Right? Everyone that is found shall be thrust through. Right? And everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. And that's what is going into 2 Ezra chapter 15. Right? The course of their actions shall stand in their power. These people are not ready for that. Look at these. There's a whole bunch of people that just don't. They don't, they don't work out. They don't do nothing, man. It's just a whole bunch of weak ass Americans. That's all it is. They're not ready to fight. Nobody. This is Ezekiel chapter 35 and verse 1. Bring it out. Yeah. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and right. prophesy against it. Right. And say unto it, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee. I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. So the Lord actually commanded his people to set their face against Mount Seir, to prophesy against them. What are we supposed to tell these other nations? Peace, peace, love, love, 
no, that's not what the scripture just said. He said you got to prophesy against it and tell them how they're going to be desolate. How the Lord is going to come and rebuke them and destroy their kingdom. That's what the that's what the scriptures provide us with, man. And you want to second edge? Hey, and it's not just it's not just uh, nah. Esau. Go to uh, Ezekiel 21, 21 and two. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter twenty-one and verse two. Bring it out. And does and I'm gonna start at one. It says, and the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward Jerusalem, and drop thy word. Toward the holy places and prophesy against the land of so Israel. So he says, prophesy against the land of Israel, and that's why we are telling them two thirds ain't gonna make it. Now go to Ezekiel twenty-five and one. This the book of Ezekiel, chapter twenty-five and verse one. Yeah. And the word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, "Son of man, set thy face against the Ammonites and prophesy against." Them. So, hey man, and we can, I can keep going. Ezekiel twenty-eight. Ezekiel 31, I could just keep going where the Lord told us to not just prophesy against es Esau, but all the nations, man. Even Israel, man. Because two-thirds want to be like these damn these, these Romans and these Greeks. And we have a count to that. That's what the account of Jason is there for. Uh who was the other brother? Uh Menalis, Menalis. That's what the accounts of those men are for, man. To show you that we have snakes among our nation. Judas, we have snakes among our nation. What's up with it, Kings? Y'all believe in the Bible? Yeah. Y'all do? Yeah. Hey, so have y'all y'all go to church? Nah, I, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't go every day, but I go sometimes. You go sometimes? So what do they teach you in church? They, they be talking about Jesus and stuff. They teach you to, do they teach you to fear God, though? Nah. Do you think you should fear God? No. Nah. Why not, though? Yeah. Hey, you think it's crazy out here? Yeah. It's crazy out here, right? Yeah. So who you think doing it? Us? Huh? Us? Us? Yeah, us. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, look, let me show you something. What you doing? Huh? Hey, I got some word to me. I ain't right, right, you go. Go ahead. Go ahead. I ain't gonna waste my time if you don't want to hear the Bible. Get it anyway. Fine. Right, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter hey, 45 and verse 7. And he further proved the action that they you know he don't fear God. Like he claimed. He said that. He don't. That's a classic and, Hosea 4 Bro, and that's 6. a classic Hosea 4 and 6, bro. And that's why the Lord going to reject that's them in the day of their calamity. What he going to do? The Lord going to laugh at them. Hey, hey, believe it or not, that's just what it's going to be, man. There ain't nothing we can do about it. That's why we try to, you know, give them the word. But ultimately, we know they're just not part of the elect. Hey, or they might be. They, they might have to hear the word another time when they're not around their friends. But you can still get that, though. Right. This is Isaiah 45 and 7. Bring it out. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Right. So, hey, the Lord do all these things, man. It ain't just people give more glory to Satan than anybody, man. That's why Satan got all these damn scary movies and all these. It's all ran by Satan. Satan, that's his job to get you to worship him, right? That's his job. Right, but the, we know the elect is not gonna be. We're not ignorant of Satan's devices, man. Uh, what did I? What was you just read? Uh, okay, you wanted me to get yeah. second. That was just fifteen. I wanted second. You want that right now? Yeah. Hey, man, it's just a whole bunch of people out here that do not fear God. When that's the, that's the whole duty of man. It's to fear God and keep His commandments. <laughs> that's why we push the commandments because, you know, people, our people have a sense of belief. They just don't. They don't know what else to do. But, 15 and 1. Yeah. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 15 and verse 1. Bring it out. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy. Right? So in Ezekiel, it says prophesy against them. And right here it says, speak thou in the ears of, uh, of my people the words of prophecy. We're telling them what's to come, what's coming to pass, man. It's about to be a whole bunch of bloodbath going on. And you you know, you ask, like, why is that all he talking about? But that's all that's in the Bible. For the one-third, now we have the gospel. For the one-third, we have Paul's letters to let us know how to deal with our flesh and the spirit. But everything else is for the wicked of the, of the earth, man. But go ahead. It says, which I will put in thy mouth, said the Lord. Right. And cause them to be written in paper, for, for they, they are faithful, faithful and true. true. Right. And I, I always say, Isaiah, Isaiah confirms it. They are faithful and true, man. Right. Go ahead. It says, fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. Right, so that's talking about the wicked of our people. You know, the, the, what the Lord saying in Ezekiel, I will make your head, your uh, forehead hard against their forehead. That goes to them scoffing and mocking, like the Anakin. I don't know if you're an Anakin, but the, the tall brother. 
like things like that. The Lord does that purposely, man. He said, I will make their forehead hard against yours because they don't want to listen. But keep going. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Man, there's a whole bunch of unfaithful people out here. It tells you that in 2nd Ezra chapter 5. It says that faith will go barren in the land. These people do not believe because you have to have works with that belief, to have with that faith. You have to. And what do these people do? They probably give a couple of pieces of bubble gum and the faith of who they call Jesus Christ. Right? Go ahead. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world. Right. The sword, famine, death, and destruction. Hey, and I can go, we can go to many different books where he gave other prophets the same visions, man. Even in the New Testament, John, he gave him the same visions, man. That's all this Bible is full of, right? Continue. For wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth, right? And their hurtful works are fulfilled, right? And what's the main part of that wickedness? Idolatry, right? Go back to that uh, Wisdom of Solomon 14 and uh, 27, I believe. 14 and 27. Idolatry. People don't know that they're in idolatry. Hey, y'all you, believe in the Bible? You believe in the Bible, bro? You do? Are you like uh, Catholic? Or are you Christian? Christianity? Y'all believe in Christianity? So, hey, can I ask you a question? Is that cool? Is that okay? Yeah. Hey, you see yourself on this side right here? Anywhere? I ain't trying to take up your whole night. I know y'all got somewhere to go. yourself on this sign? We don't have this sign for no reason. This is a biblical sign in Ezekiel chapter 37. So that's why I'm asking. Where do you see yourself at, King? Where? Are you a Mexican? Or are you an Indian? Are you a Negro? I guess. You say you Mexican, right? So you'll be from the tribe of Issachar. Let me ask you this. Do you see Mexican in the Bible? The word Mexican. What does Mexican mean? I know you don't know. It's dealing with the moon when you go into Mexican. So if y'all don't know who Mexican is, that means that name was given to y'all, right? So when we look in the Bible, y'all be from the tribe of Issachar, though. God's chosen people. Do you know anything about God's chosen people? No, nothing. And that's what we are here for. Uh, We're here to help you, but I ain't out here to waste your time. Right? So according to the Bible, well, let me ask you this. How did y'all get over here? How did Mexicans get over here? Wait, 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 wait. You went across 31st at Riverside. Wait. If you don't want to talk, that's fine. Wait. Do you know how Mexicans got over here? Wait. He never goes to Mexico. No, no, I'm asking you how Mexicans got over here oh. to America. Wait. Because, you know, at first this was a place that no man dwelt. Nobody was here at first. And then y'all came over here. I'm going to tell you. Y'all came over here, right? It's a, it's in the scriptures why y'all came over here and how y'all came over here, right? And it's in the scriptures Wait. that the so-called Spaniard, the real Spaniards came over here after y'all. You understand? Wait. <laughs> hey, you speak Spanish? Yeah. And the point is, white men literally conquered your people. That's why you speak Spanish, bro. You got to see your history is in the Bible. You got to see it, man. Hey, next time we we'll see you again, maybe if you come back, we got to actually show you that in the Bible. I know you want to go spend time with your family, but it's important. It's very important that you know who you are according to God. If you feel like it's not important, go ahead. But God... spend time with your mama that's a beautiful thing you got to honor your parents but bro you got to give us a chance to show us who you really are to god like 15 minutes that's all we need yo undivided attention though that's all we need bro hey if you think you can focus better by doing what you got to do and then come back that's fine man yeah that's cool 
That's fine. You want to come back? Maybe. I don't know. It's up to you. Hey, if you don't want to know, hey, if you don't want to know, if you don't want to know, it's all right, bro. We're not going to take it personal. You can go ahead. It's all right. So what you think? Hey, so can we ask you, y'all want to, y'all was going to go spend some time together? I was asking them if they want to wait. Huh? I was asking them if they wanted to. I mean, we talking about the Bible here, though. Like, what do you, what do you think we should do? Wait, just leave it everywhere. I read my Bible. That's Spanish. What's she say? It's not good. She, she actually goes, she reads the Bible all the time. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's why I'm asking you, what do you want to do? Because I can tell you the head, like you clearly the head. Huh? Uh, all right, so all, all praise. praise. All hey, give him, hey, give him some. All praise to the most high. So look, well, all we trying to show you, bro, is Mexicans, native native Indians, Mexicans, and Negroes are the same people. We come from the nation of Israel, God's chosen people. You know anything about Moses? Huh? Just someone. You know about him being delivered out of Egypt? Well, that was that was you. That's all we're trying to show you. We're the same people. That's why the blacks, Hispanics, and the Indians, we all go through the same thing. Slavery, tortures, torment, all that, we go through the same thing. Now, I want to show you in 2nd Ezra 13, the history of y'all coming over here. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 13 and verse 40. Bring yeah. it Those are the 10 tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own lands in the time of Hosea. Right. Or Hosea. The king whom Shalmaneser, the king of Assyria, led away captive. So you don't have to worry about the names like that. Right? King Hosea, Assyrian. Just know that you was in captivity on the eastern side of the world at one point in time. And, go ahead. And he carried them over the waters and so they came into another land but they took this counsel among themselves that they would lead the multitude of the heathen it says so your people the ten tribes they can't they came together and was like we got to get out of here because y'all was literally in captivity you have a history full of captivity why are you always being oppressed no matter where you go no matter where you go your people which is our people, the same people, we always slaves, no matter where we go. And it's not by, do you believe in coincidences or you think everything happened for a reason? Everything happened for a reason, King. And it's not by coincidence that your people keep going in captivity. Like I said, you don't even know the language that you speak, Spanish. You was conquered and forced to learn that language. This, the, hey, the other language you speak, English, you was forced and conquered to learn that language. Why do you think we speak this? You know, we got over here just the same way. It says, hey, so you know anything about the Aztecs? Uh, you got to get into your history, man. You got to get into your history, man. Moctezuma, you don't know about Moctezuma? Bro, how I know about your history and you don't? Bro, you have to understand history. History is a very important thing in life because the man that has, the nation or man that has you know, power on earth, he has the power to change history. That's why you, like, you don't know about your history, bro. Because they taught you. Mexicans, Latinos, but you're not. You are God's chosen people, bro. You have a kingdom waiting on you. If you believe in the Bible, I know y'all don't go to church for no reason. Y'all believe, right? Y'all gonna make it to the kingdom. You have hey, to. Can I say something? And this is probably something that they never gonna teach you. They tell you that the kingdom of God is somewhere in the sky, huh? and there's one big, one big gate, and everybody walks through it. So that's not what the Bible says. The kingdom of heaven is actually on earth. You ever feel like you're going through hell? Hell is on earth too. It's a condition. It's a mindset that you're in. That's what the Bible teaches. Now, being now, you always say in Christianity, you got to be saved. Saved. You got to be saved. You know what? Saved salvation really goes back to being saved from your enemies. That's what salvation really goes back to. But you got to understand that everybody not everybody not your friends. So you do you feel like you have enemies? That's the problem. All right, so do you feel like you're in slavery? Okay, you got to have a, let's be real, you got to have a green card to be over here. But this is your country. Why is it like, that's oppression, that's slavery, bro. They building a wall and made Mexico pay for it. You know what they doing to your, our brothers and sisters? They putting them in cages, literally. 
feeding them scraps. Hey, the shelter that they got, the covers that they got made of foil, those kind of things. This is what we meditate on. Our people getting out of that condition. So y'all and y'all meditating on going to spend family time. That's cool. There's nothing wrong with that, gang. But you gotta understand the times that we're living in, it's the end times. All you hear about now is what? More pestilence, famine. They talk about um, shortage of food all the time. All of these things is going into prophecy. And it's important in order to understand this book. Because when you go to church, you probably clock out. Let's be honest. You probably don't really, it probably don't really hit like that. It probably don't make a whole bunch of sense. It's probably, first of all, they got you worshiping a white man. Hey, Christ looked more like you than a white man. It gives you the description of what Jesus looked like, bro. And he's not a white man. Hey, God, God isn't a friendly God. He isn't, it tells you that God is a man of war, bro. You gotta, I'm telling you, bro, once you understand who you are according to this book, you're gonna really understand what this world is about. It's not a book of fairy tale. This is your history. Yours. Not everybody else, yours, man. And the first steps of understanding this book was understanding who you are according to God. Because you're reading the scriptures like it's for everything. But I'm telling you, these scriptures, they got history and time periods, kings, your kings, your enemies' kings. It's way more deeper than that, bro. And you can understand the future if you understand who you are, man. That's why we that's why we ask you who we are, bro. Who you are first. Because this book ain't for I know this is so much information. It's, you never you never heard it before. So we're gonna give you what we can give you. Today, I want you to know that you God don't he don't call he don't know you as a Mexican. He know you as an Israelite. Say that, Israelite. Israelite. That's God's chosen people. He has a favorite people. And he put them in slavery for disobeying them. How do you disobey God? You know you gotta obey God, right? But we've been disobeying him. You know what sin is? What is sin? Now I'm on your bumper now. What is sin? See? That's how we know that we know that God don't like sin, right? But it's sin though. How do we stay away from what God don't like? Show the brothers. This is important. Yeah. He gonna show you what sin is. This is so important, bro. This is First John three and four. Right now, whosoever tr committed sin transgressed also the law. Come on. For sin is the transgression of the law. That might have made not, that might not have made sense. But the only time you are in sin is when you break the law. I'm talking about God's law. Did you know God had a law that you can't eat pork? That's in the Bible. If you go eat pork, you're in sin. What they call chorizo. You know what that is, Charles? Yeah. So you can't so, eat that. You can't eat that. That's pork, bro. If it got uh, pork in it, you can't eat it. That's it, something small, though. That's right. And guys don't like that. And it seems like it's a small thing, but it's not to God. God said, and we know it's serious. It means business. It means business. Mm -hmm. Straight up. That's all we're trying to show you, bro, is you, you God's chosen people. And we was really trying to show you how you got over here. Mm -hmm. Right? According to history. Because like the brother said, this is a history book. It's a history. Your history book. You understand so far? It's a lot of information. Hey, but, so, go ahead. Do your church tell you how to repent? They show you how to repent? Is she the only one, though? So can you ask her right quick in your language? Ask her, how to, do she know how to repent? I don't know how to translate. Okay, that's cool. That's all right. So, but we can... Well, we can just show you. Is that cool? We can show you, and then you can just, however you can later on, you can translate it to her. Because this is very important. This is, I, I want to make sure I show all my people how to repent before they leave, man. Because I know you got to do your thing. You already know the scriptures I want to give you. Yeah, Acts 3 19, Psalms 19 and 7, Matthew 18 and 4, and I'll let you know the business. But, bro, you are an Israelite. You're not a Mexican. You're not a Latino. Why would you call yourself something you don't know? Right? But we're showing you that you're an Israelite. This is, the Bible. this is Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Hello. Now, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. So what's sin? We showed you what sin was. You remember? Sin is when you do what? It's a lot of information. Sin is bad, right? You got it. Sin is when you break God's law. Sin is breaking God's law. So do you know any of God's laws? Like, it's easy to get altered. You know what I'm saying? When you eat the pork for the meat or something, that's when you get blind. And he allows you to be blind. He said God is a man of war. And he doesn't have time. For, you know, he doesn't make you listen to him. That's what he's trying to say. You know what I'm saying? If you choose to 
run blind, you run blind. A lot of us are blind. I'm blind myself. You know what I'm saying? We're going to deal, deal with you in a second. We okay. definitely want to deal with you. Absolutely. All right, so at the end of the day, it says repent and be converted. Right? That means stop sinning. And what we're trying to show you is what sin is. It goes back to God's laws. Do you know any of God's laws? The Ten Commandments. Do you know any Ten Commandments? No. You have to know these commandments, man. You have to. How do you know if you're pissing God off or not? Do you care that you piss that you piss God off? You care? You know God hates certain people, right? Do you believe that? That God hates? He ain't never heard that before. Okay. Mm -hmm. He ain't never heard that. What do you think about that? God hates. Okay, can you ask your mom that? Ask her, does she know that God hates? It's alright, 12 and 10. 12 and uh, 10. Alright, the fourth and fifth so I'm, we're speaking about God though. God hates sinners. Yeah. Okay. Look, let me show you right quick. Sorry, right, twelve. The most I hate sinners. This is Sirach twelve. This is Sirach twelve verse six. Bring it out for the Most High hateth sinners and will repay vengeance unto the ungodly and keep of them against the mighty day of their punishment. So you just witnessed that, right? It said God hated sinners. So it's not the sin that he hates because think about it. If he don't sin, then so you're telling me he just hates something that, that nobody's performing? No, he hates the person that's performing. So hey, make sure you tell her that God hates the sinners if she witnessed that scripture. Right? But God do hate sinners? Our praise is there. Yeah. Our, our church probably on our Hey, so to make it make sense, God hates you if you break in his law. Right. Now, if you break in his law, God hates you. That's why it's important that you learn God's law. Does that make sense? Now, you know it's a law that you gotta honor your mom. That's a law. You know, it's a law that you gotta put the most high God first. What's the most important? What's the what's your most important hobby? You play video games. You a gamer, huh? You spend more time on a game than understanding God. He hates you right now because you put in that game before him. That's you probably idolatry. Hey, you probably stream. Who knows? You probably getting into it. If you put in that before God, He hates you. He literally kills people for doing that. But the Lord giving you mercy, man. He's showing you great. He really loves you though. That's why He's giving you this opportunity to understand like how you abusing things. That's that's real love. Hey. And don't look at us like we, we ain't nothing. But one thing we do is we have this word. You see, we all up here with Bibles. We got the word. Don't look at us like I'm not learning from them. It's the most high God's word that we're bringing out. We're showing you what sin is according to what God said. Who you are according to what God said, not what we said. So what he's showing you is sin is, is important. You have to know what sin is so you will know not to break it. So you need to go over God's laws. Hey, you got you got your phone? Now, we usually got our flyers, but we don't have our flyers today because we're not, uh, we're not right, hold on. We're feeling good. You got a flyer? All right, he think he might have a flyer. I was going to have you show, I was going to show you our use because there's so much stuff we want to show you, but I know it's hard for you to like focus because you already have flyers because you have your mom. That's beautiful. But I want you to be able to look at some of this information. So we got our YouTube open. Man, check out our YouTube. I'm thrilled. Yeah, hey, watch this one video. First, we want to see how you act first. Yeah. Yeah. One video. Okay. One video, bro. You got me? Hey, you know that's a sin. That's breaking God's law. Like, he knew that one. He knew that one. You can't do that. I like, I like, I like um, anime. I like Naruto. Man. What's your name? Henry. I got you. I'm going to get on him. And yeah, we gonna hit you up, bro, because we want to talk about Naruto. We're going to see who the hardest is. <laughs> right. Who you think the hardest? You think he the hardest? It's actually, he was like, hey, young out there. <laughs> like, eight, 12. Like, already moving like a damn. Like a Hokage. Hey, don't think we don't be, you know, we don't have fun. Yeah, we, we still, still, we still well, us. There's bro. a restriction, bro. We have to abide by them in order to get salvation. Mm -hmm. But if we don't let you do your thing, because I know your family left you. Hey, tell me your name. Henry. 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 Okay. That's Henry right there. All right. All right, man. Hey, y'all have a good night. Good job. All right. Yes, ma'am. Good job. What's up with it? My name is Trey. Your name is Trey. All right, so first, do you see yourself on the side? Because I know you was looking at it. He already know. He already I, know who I he is. I feel like yes. I, in a way, I see myself. Why you say but that? I really don't know like my true self. Just okay. the amount of if you can respect how many all the I've been like. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So really knowing the truth, but I can understand the truth as I experienced it. Mm. Okay, so what got your attention to stop it? <laughs> because I, I heard the Bible and I seen the microphone and I really ain't had nowhere to go right now. You know what I'm but there's a lot of things that I was figuring out and I'm waiting on my name. on his son is from the nation of Israel, God's chosen people. Do you know anything about the Bible? Are you familiar with the Bible, sir? I'm familiar. Do you know about do you, I have a question for you, sir. All right, what's up? Do you know what the word Bible means? I know the acronym for Bible. What? Basic instructions before leaving earth. Um, I think bibliography. Or yeah, gathered books or something like that. Yeah. Bibliography meaning what? And one's ourself as we view it to God. Our story is we do to God, because yeah, I understand that. So why we, why we, I don't want to get caught up on that. I want to get caught up on what's in the book. Okay, yes, instead sir. of that. Absolutely. So what is your question? That's your, that's your question? No, no, no. That was just one of my questions. Okay, I, that's, cool. not, I, that's just the question that I just right. had. No, please. Yeah, that's Continue. cool. Just ask your question. That was just one of the, it was a fast question. My, my brain just kind of moves fast. So you, do you know about the Hebrewism I told you? More or less, I've been in more. But I had a lot of information that's been processed through my head, but I heard several stories. right here are going to have these people in, in slavery pretty soon. What do you think about that? teach for the most part we're trying to teach wake our people up you already know waking our people up teaching them who they are according to god that's one of our main 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 missions when we come out here teach our people who they are according to god like we're not just black men no more we the children the most like we the israelites the chosen people so that's one main thing we do another thing we teach we teach how america is going to be destroyed we teach how his people is going to be redeemed out of captivity Hey, all of these things, you're not taking it lightly. Serious? No, I'm not taking it lightly. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll just... I, I'm, I'm on the same page. Okay, you okay. okay. So you said you were, you was looking, um, you're trying to figure out what's going on. That's why I'm explaining these things. If you want to figure out what's going on, you're in the right place. The best thing for you to do right now is to ask them questions that you've never been able to ask. To build those relationships that you've never been able to build. That's what brotherhood and unity is about. So... Hey man, Lord willing, Lord willing, we can help you and answer some of your questions. All right, what else you think? What else you got?
So this is John chapter 15 and 16. Bring it out. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit. So this scripture is saying we didn't choose the Most High God. The Most High God chose us. He chose... The Most High God has favorites. He shows favoritism on who he wants. Do you believe that or do I need to prove it? Let's get Deuteronomy 7 and 6. I'm going to show you that because I've seen your eyes, your eyes lit up. We're going to show you that the Most High God has favorites, all right? Go ahead. This is Deuteronomy 7 verse 6. Bring right? it out. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. You know, you're familiar with Moses. This is what Moses said to the Israelites when they got out of Egypt. Come on. The Lord thy God have chosen thee. To be a special people. To be a what? To be, be a, a special, special people. people. So if you got somebody that's special, you got somebody who's not special. If you got somebody who's your favorite, you got somebody who's not your favorite. That makes sense? Finish that out. That's powerful. Watch this. Unto himself, above, above all, all people, people that are upon the face of the earth. He said the Israelites are chosen above all people that are upon the face of the earth. That makes sense? So when he said, I chose you, that's all that's going on. The Lord chose us to come out here and preach to preach the words of God. Finish that out. Read that again. John, it says, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you right. and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye ask of the Father in my name, he may give it. Right. And that's something that's beautiful. This brother, he helped bring tons of brothers into the knowledge of the Most High God. That's his fruit. And he ordained that fruit that it, it don't wither. That it remains solid. And the fruit that he get, them fruit bring other fruit. You're familiar with a seed, right? You got one seed that hey, one tree can make a hundred trees because them seeds, they keep going. They keep they keep getting planted and planted in the ground. They keep they keep growing. They keep going. They just keep going, man. So that's what we that's why we out there. You got another tree seed, but so this is Proverbs 2020. So we just went over how the most high chose certain men to come out and teach his word, right? It says Wisdom crieth without. She uttered her voice in the streets. So one thing for sure, bro, you will see a lot of Jehovah Witnesses. You've probably seen them post up right here before. Jehovah Witnesses, Christ, uh, Christianity, any of those different religions. But one thing for sure is they don't have is wisdom. Right? So this is not us speaking. This is wisdom speaking. It says, wisdom crieth out without. She uttered her voice in the streets. That's how you was able to hear because we uttering the voice of wisdom out here. And we out here in the streets teaching. Right? right? Go ahead. It says... She cried in the chief place of concourse. And you know how the gathering place is always a bunch of people here. That's why we come here. Now your question, you remember what your question was? Why we out here? To reach our people, man. To reach you. Yeah, that's crazy. That's amazing. Yeah. Hey, it says, In the opening of the gates in the city, she uttered her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? Right, simple as hell wanting to be in a, a country that's not ours, knowing that we're being oppressed here. That's simple. This ain't our place. And we telling them that they have we have a kingdom prepared for us, waiting for us. All that we gotta do is get right. That's simple for somebody to just walk past that. So in this scripture it says the most high God when he you know how we'd be like, bro, you you retarded, you go. The most high God The most high God when he wants to call somebody dumb He'll call them simple. Does that make sense? They call them simple. So read that again. So it says, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning. So how long is y'all simple people gonna love simplicity? That's like how long is you gonna be done for, bro? How long is you gonna be retarded for? How how long? Because we know that knowledge is what? Power. Knowledge is power. But how long is people gonna love being uh without knowledge? How long is people gonna love not having power? So the most high God is talking to our people. Because we the ones who don't have power. We know who got power. Now I get uh can you get uh okay, okay come on. can you get uh Job 9 to 24? You see what I'm gonna grab this real quick. You guys heard that. Hey, so who we're gonna show you the answer, but just uh make a guess. Do uh do we have power on earth? Like the power to rule the whole world right now? Are we in power? We're not, but we have the ability. I agree, but who is actually ruling in, in power right now? If you was to classify it, is it Chinese people? I wouldn't even say it's people that's running the world. Okay. It's, it's money that's running the world, 
Okay, who runs the money? Created, Whose face is created on the money? The money. You see what I'm saying? You see where we're going though, right? You said money runs the world. We understand that, but who runs them currencies and the money? Okay. The bank. Let me show you this. Read that real quick. It's the book of Job chapter You can nine, think it's deeper, 24. but that's why we got the scriptures to show you what it is. Read that. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. The whole earth is given to who? The, the hand, hand of, of the, the wicked. wicked. Now, who are the wicked people on earth? The most wicked people on earth who literally steals a man's identity. Not just a man, a whole nation. Who steals a man's land? We're not talking about a little, a little property. We're talking about a whole country. We're talking about countries. Have black people ever did that? That you know, of, where they stole a whole man's identity? You, a, hey, what is our nationality? That's what they told us, but that's not our real identity according to the, according to the Bible, according to God. You see how? Can you follow that? That makes sense. They stole our identity. Not only that, they stole our land twice. That I'm just thinking of right now. They stole Israel and they stole America. Because we know that um, indigenous people was here in America first. They literally took that. That's wicked. So he said the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Come on. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. Right? If not. If not, where? And who is he? So if it's East, if white people are not the wicked and the judges of the whole world, who is it? That's what it say. Read that last part again. If not, where and who is it? If that's not the main suspect, point them out. Who is it? That makes sense though, right? The way that I understood that, you know what I'm saying? So I understood this. Do you have you ever noticed something like when when you're happy and you smile? What about like just smile? Or when you're angry and you get mad and you hit something and you frustrate, you release that. What's your point? Where does that go? What do you mean? It's in the air. It doesn't go nowhere. You know what I'm you saying? Know, so when they say that, uh, you look mean at the heinous things, things, look at the heinous things that have happened in our history. On the, and you talk about white people, that white people have done. Seven, now look at the heinous things that black people have done. Where does that go? Because after the heinous things, it's it's curse. it doesn't just, it doesn't just leave. Bro, we not, what's your point though? What does that got to do with the scriptures? That's that what I'm about out? to say. Like, you gotta stick to the point, bro. Like, we got some more scriptures that help further prove like who's ruling the world. So we gotta start with there. We gotta start with someone. We can't just bounce off the walls like that. It's, 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 it's spirits that's ruling the world. Now watch this. Hey, give me. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you said that. that. So you know that's in the Bible, right? All right, we're going to show you. Give me uh, Ephesians. That's what I was trying to say. Get Ephesians 6 and 12. Get that. This is wisdom and Solomon. And I'm already knowing where you're going, but you got to have understanding behind you. Because because you got the knowledge that there's spirits around here. You know, being angry is a spirit. Being happy is a spirit. So I'm going to show you how these spirits correlate with the Bible and who really is well in the world. That makes sense? Read that. Chapter 12, verse 1. Read that. For thine incorruptible spirit is in all things. Read that again. For no. thine incorruptible spirit is in all things. So I'm just showing you spirits, the spirits that we're talking about, whether it's emotions, whether it's um, depression. Depre the Most High God's spirit is in everything. So you kind of was get you was kind of hitting the nail on the head it's everywhere but how do we understand it and expand it go to ephesians chapter 6 and 12 and we're going to show you different scriptures so you can understand it that makes sense absolutely ephesians 6 and 12 you know, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood so we don't fight against flesh and blood it's bigger than that because it's not just a physical battle no more it's a spiritual battle that makes sense come on this is but against principalities, right? against powers. Against powers, come on. Against the rulers of darkness of this world. So the rulers of darkness of this world. That's what we're fighting against. You know how you got God is good and he's righteous? That's a righteous spirit on earth. But you know you have a balance. When you got light, what balance out the light? When you got good, what balance out the good? So yeah, we got the most high God. He's building up a righteous people, but you have the opposite. You see what I'm saying? You following me? So I'm going to tie this full circle and you're going to begin to understand who those people are. Because if we're the children of God, of God who's, the, who's the children of the devil? 
We're gonna show them. Don't it say the synagogue of Satan? Give me that um, Revelation three and nine. We're gonna show. You gotta be able to understand this. Go ahead. It says against spiritual wickedness in high places. So it's actually spiritual wickedness in high places. You got good spirits. You got bad spirits. The good spirits is um, you'll learn how to you'll learn about the good spirits when you when you open up the Bible and really read. When you learn the law, statutes, and commandments. When you start keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Righteous spirits having mercy. Right. in high places, they like chaos. They like disobeying God. They like a whole bunch of evil things. Let me get that, King. You want two or nine, three or nine? Uh, which one says the synagogue of Satan? Okay, I got two. Oh, okay, come on. This is Revelation. Two verse nine. Hey, you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy, bro? Hey, hold on, hold on. Before we get this, I want you to understand the things that I'm expressing to you right now and showing you in this book. It's not a simple and easy small thing. This is actually something deep that nobody else understands. Bro. The fact that I'm even sharing this information with you is very pivotal. Very pivotal. It's, it's, it's major. It's super serious, bro. Hey, I want you to be completely honest with me. This is going to determine how I deal with you. Are you hot? Uh -huh. Yeah. I can't only go like this. I said I wouldn't get hot. I mean, but it's like like drinking a cup of coffee. Bro, are you high? Uh, let me. Okay, what are you? Are you buzzing? Are you on any influence? He is. He is. Yeah. He is. There's no point in me sharing you, sharing with you something so important to the Most High God, and you not being in the right mind frame to even receive it. I can't, I can't disrespect. It tell us not to cast our pearls to certain people. She believes, but see, I talk, I talk to God too. That's fine. That's fine, bro. That's fine. I mean, I understand what you're saying. Hey, we gonna get you a flyer, and next time you run into us, we can teach you uh, more effectively, right? Yeah. We can teach you some other time more effectively, but see, man. Look, but I have a question though. You know how long it's been? It's been saying that they've been using mind stimulants for like what for? Ritual. You know what I'm saying? What's your point? Ancient time. What's your point? Is it bad getting stimulated? Your mind stimulated. Stimulated off what? Off the things that we have been given to stimulate off of. Brother, just be honest. We have been we have been given Brother, things with It's gonna be hard for you to get around. Because the most I got right there. Stimulus. That's what I'm saying. All stimulus. There are several stimulus. This is first Peter chapter five verse eight. Yeah. Take what we're showing you serious, yeah, man. Because right you're not sober right now. And okay. look, brother, look, but I don't know what you're doing in your spare time. That's on you. That's in between. That's that's between you and the most high God. But you're not gonna be able to abuse us and let us teach you all of these beautiful things and you walk away with nothing. So you got the flyer in your hand? You got the flyer? Just come back and talk to us when you're ready. Because right now you're not ready. All right, Trey, man, I look forward to hearing from you. Absolutely. Hey, how do you get these um, arms from you? Man, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't sit there and teach somebody. Yeah, you can tell with the little white. I'm already knowing, man, it started kicking in even more. Hey, you know what's crazy? It gradually got worse. When he was over there, when he first pulled up, he was fine. He could focus. But that's just start kicking in, man. It start kicking in. You notice in. that? Hey, wisdom. Hey, man. Wisdom. It says wisdom seeks out. It passes and going through all things, man. It's gonna be hard for you to get around that. Am I off for doing that? No. I ain't even noticed that, bro. I would have probably dealt with that. Man, ain't no way I'm a. Ain't no way we can just cast these pearls, man. Not like that. Not like that. 
That's all. Hey, Lord willing. Okay. Hey, I want to bring this out too. Hey, so look, this is Joe, chapter one. So my brother just brought out. Well, I, I just brought out. Right. First Peter five and eight, where it says, "Be sober, be vigilant, because as a roaring wire, your adversary walking around seeking whom he may devour." And this is an account of Job, where Satan literally right. tell you out of his own mouth, "This is what he do." What are you so this doing? is Job chapter one and six. Yep. It says, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, whence comest thou? He like, where you been? We know God know where he been. He just questioned him. It says, then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it. Now he's not saying, seeking whom I may devour because the most high already know what he was doing. It says, and the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that fear of God and is skewed evil? So one thing we have to realize, man, that Satan is doing Satan and the Most High God is doing this with each and every one of us also. Right? The Most High God might be on our side and Satan like, bro, if you do this to him, I'm telling you, he's gonna curse you to your face. This is something we have to consider, man. It says, Then Satan answered the Lord. And said, Doth God, does Job fear God for not? Do we fear you for no reason? Has not. Yeah. Verse 10, right? Yeah. It says, has not thou made an hedge about him right. and about his house right. and about all that he have on every side? Right. Thou has blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. Hey, and some of us might look at the, the same thing. This council is, is being amongst all. Man, go to uh, Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 6. There's a council. Um, about us all in the heavens that's why we go through certain things and we wonder why we're going through because the most high and satan is making deals right the most high like man i bet you he ain't gonna crack and satan like do this to him and i bet you he crack that's why some brothers wives leave some brothers hey family members turn on them some brothers hey all kind of hey the thorn in the flesh whatever it whatever that is you know brothers dealing with things in the flesh whatever they going through it but it's because it's a council being talked about about you now this in wisdom of Solomon is dealing with wicked people, but we know it's happening right here in Job about a righteous man. So I'm just tying it up to make to make it known that there's a council in the heavens about the wicked and the righteous. Go ahead. This is wisdom of Solomon, one verse six. Bring it out. For wisdom is a loving spirit, right, and will not acquit a blasphemy of his words. Right. For God is witness of his reign, right. and a true beholder of his heart, right, and a hearer of his tongue. Right. So. It's, all it's saying is the most high God hear of everything, right? Through wisdom, go ahead. For the spirit of the Lord fill the, filleth the world, right? And that which containeth all things have knowledge of the voice. Right. That's why the most high, the first thing he said is, let there be light, and there was light. Everything has knowledge of his voice. The waters, you might not look at it like the waters have laws, right? And I sent the little, uh, did y'all read that? Y'all didn't read that. Hey, did y'all read that? You seen what? The like water laws. Oh yeah, I see. I see what you're doing. Yeah. yeah, like everything has a law, even water. Yeah, right. Definitely. But go ahead. Therefore, he that speaketh unrighteous things cannot be hid. Right. Neither shall vengeance, I'll, 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 I'll when it punisheth, pass by him. Go ahead. For inquisition shall be made into the counsels of the ungodly. So this is the point right here. It says inquisition, which is an investigation, shall be made into the counsels of the ungodly. Right. They're having a council up in the heavens. The uh, the angels in the Most High God and Satan. The, the uh, angels on the left hand side and the angels on the right hand side are having a council about what to do with you, right? What you can take and what you can't take, right? That's why the most I tell you, I don't, I'm not gonna give you something you can't handle. Hey, can, can you, uh, somebody get the account where he said I would be a lion tongue in the mouth? Uh, verse 16. Yeah, I want you to hold that joke. Okay. But keep going on that. For inquisition shall be made into the counsels of the ungodly, right? And the sound of his word shall come unto the Lord for the manifestation of his wicked deeds. It says that his wicked deeds are going to go up to the Lord, and this is where they have a counsel about you. Now you can drop that. Go to Job 33. He got the precept you want. All right, go ahead. This is the book of 1 Kings, chapter 22, and verse 19. Bring it out. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord, right? 
I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, right? And all the host of the heaven standing by him. And that goes into the angels, right? Go ahead. On his right hand and on his left. Hey, so what? See, the left hand side and the right hand side. We cannot sit here. This is our Christianity picture. Like the most high God and the angels is up there just sitting around doing nothing. No, it tells you the thing that you bind in on earth, it'll be bound in heaven. They're doing the same thing up in the heavens. They're having councils about us, just like we have councils about other people. They're having councils too on what to do with us. Just like we have councils on what to do. How are we gonna come to camp? What are we, how are we gonna do this? Well, right, there's different angels for different categories, man. Right? And I actually got a lesson, I ain't did it yet, but. This is Proverbs chapter 11 and verse one. Bring it out. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. So like the captain was going into, man, you got angels on the left-hand side, angels on the right-hand side. You got angels that have different jobs. They talk about that in Zechariah, man. But not to get too deep. Hey, man, you got good powers, you got bad powers, man. Hey, you, the Lord gonna have an angel go lot to a man. He can do that. The Lord has a whole army, a host of angels to carry out his will, man. What makes you think that he's not gonna use them in this way? Right? That's why the scriptures was written for our learning so we can understand how the Most High God operates. See the lens that he views his people in, how he views the rest of the world in, why he even do all of this. That's why we got the Bible. That's why we got the scriptures. So we can really understand who we serve. That makes sense? Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Now that Kings. Oh, you have some? No. All right, go back to the Kings. This is verse 20. We want 19 and 20. Yeah. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade I have? That he may go up and fall at Ramah Gilead. Right. So the council was the council was that the Lord says, "Hey, who's gonna who's gonna go and convince Ahab to go to this place where he can be slaughtered? Because remember, their judgment was to be eaten by dogs and their blood be licked up off the ground." Right. But keep going on that. That he may go up and fall at Ramah Gilead. Right. right. And one said on this man. And another said on that man, right? So they're having a council. They're talking and they're giving their ideas. The angels are giving their ideas to the Most High. But let's see what the Most High wanted to do, what he agreed to. Go ahead. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord, right? Said, I will persuade him, right? And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth. And I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. See? And he said, thou shalt persuade him. Right. And prevail also. And prevail means be successful. So the Lord liked it, that plan. That's why he stuck with it, man. But it was a counsel on what they was going to do, how they was going to lead him to that, that location. Right? From the angels in the most high on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So we know that a left-hand angel stood up and was like, yeah, I got this one. Because that's their job, man. They got to fulfill their job. The right-hand angels, they got righteousness of a job. So let's get that. Uh, Job 33. This is Job 33, verse 19. Bring right? it out. He is chastened also with pain upon his bed. Right. And the multitude of his bones with strong pain. Now, this is Job going through that thorn, what we call a thorn in the flesh. Right? Go ahead. So that his life abhors bread. Right. And his soul dainty meat. His flesh is consumed away that he cannot be seen. Right. And his bones that were not seen stick out. Right. This is him talking about him, you know, when you sick, you don't want to eat, you don't want to drink. You know, and you know, you start to get skinnier. But go ahead. Yea, his soul draws near unto the grave, and his life to the destroyer. Right. If there be a messenger with them, an interpreter, one among a thousand. Right. So this is going back to a uh, uh, Greek word angelos, which means angel, and it, it means messenger, though. But go ahead, because we're considered angels too. I don't know if you believe that sounds far fetched, but we consider angels too. But angel just means messenger. Right. Go ahead. To shew unto man his uprightness. Right. Then he is gracious unto him. Right. And said, Deliver him from going down to the pit. Right. I have found a ransom. See, this is a counsel that they're having. He's like, Hey, save him, save his life. Do not allow him to die. I have found a ransom. That means they had a counsel. And they weighed. They they weighed the dust in the balance. Is he doing good or is he doing bad? Right. That's why I said it showed man his uprightness. So obviously, Job was a righteous man. That's why he was saved out of the situation. But it still was a council going on. Go ahead. His flesh shall be fresher than a child. Right. He shall return to the days of his youth. Right. 
he shall pray unto God and he will be favorable unto him. Straight up, man. That's it. But in Job chapter one, if you read Job chapter one, it, it, it even labeled his children, his wife and children as a substance. That's what it's saying there. Go back to Job chapter one. So all his substance was taken away from him. And the, uh, the next chapter, chapter two, it was dealing with the flesh. So that's how we have to look at it. The Lord will allow Satan to take away your substance, whether it's wife, children, or even your substance that you work hard to get, or he'll uh, you know, have Satan deal with you in the flesh. You know, verse 10, right? Satan dealing with you. This is Job chapter 1 and verse 10. Out. Has not thou made a hedge about him, right. and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Right. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. Right? But keep going, though. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. All right, so now drop down to uh, uh, 18. Verse, fact, 17. verse 17. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried with, it says, and carried them away. He has slain the servants. With the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped to tell thee. Right, boy. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead, and I am only escaped alone to tell thee. Right, so if you read verse 10, though, it said that the, all of these things was his substance. Right, and then when you go into the next chapter, it's dealing with his flesh, what he was dealing with. Right, go to seven and five, right quick. Okay. Got a little bit more time. This is the book of Job, chapter seven and verse five. Right, Bro. this is what Job was dealing with in a, what we call a thorn in the flesh. Right, can you get it in another translation though? Oh, I think it's NLT. NIV. Wait, you got it. Wait. All right, seven and five. This is the book of Job, chapter seven and verse five. Bring it out. My flesh is clothed with worms and clods of dust. Right. My skin is broken and become loathsome. So when you see a righteous brother going through something like that, we understand that it's Satan doing it, but he's being tried, right? And that's what Job was talking about throughout the whole book. He like, bro, y'all condemning me for something I'm not doing, right? Because that's what you'll do. If something happens to somebody, you automatically think God is punishing them. But that's why I was, you know, talking to the brother, like I want to deal with it. The, the chastising our people and giving them more understanding on that why they going through what they going through man? you know even it out with prophecy it says all right this is job 7 verse 5 in the niv my body is clothed with worms and scabs my skin is broken and festering right so festering goes into uh pus that's what i was really looking for uh i think it's Job nlt you know or gnt one of them but Job is explaining what he's explaining to you. I don't think none of us will be able to bear that. That's what makes that man so strong. You got something? Uh, did you call it uh, thorn in the flesh? Did you want that? Yeah, you can get that, yeah. That's cool. All right. Yeah. That's cool. What, NLT? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay. This is Job 7 verse 5 in the out. NLT. Right. My body is covered with maggots and scabs. Right. My skin breaks open, oozing with pus. Man, that's a scary thing. I don't think I would be able to go through that, man. I don't think nobody would. But that's what he was dealing with, and he overcame that. Straight up, man. So that's all I'm showing is Satan come at you with, by either taking your substance away from you or giving you a thorn in the flesh. So when we go to Paul, when he says he had a thorn in the flesh, he did, he wasn't specific on what it was. But Paul tells you he had a thorn in the flesh. Go ahead. God, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7. Bring it out. Go. And lest I should be exalted above measure right. through the abundance of revelations. Right. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. So Paul is saying, he says, uh, he would be exalted above measure, right? Through the abundance of what prophecy it said? Yeah. It says, and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations. Of revelations, right? The things that Paul is revealing, people will start to worship. People worship Paul now. Yeah. Right? But Paul is telling you, go ahead. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Right. The messenger of Satan to buffet me. Lest I should be exalted above measure. There you have it. That's what Satan's job is, and that's the same thing Job had, a thorn in the flesh. That's what we call a thorn in the flesh. In the flesh. Right? And sometimes it might seem burdensome. Because Job said, Job said what he was going through was lofty. 
He hated it, man. He said he couldn't sleep or none of that. He said he couldn't deal with it, man. Right? But, uh, that's it on it. I can bring this up? Yeah. Kind. Uh, I got two. This is Sirach chapter 2 and verse 1. Bring it out. It says, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. It says, Set thy heart aright and constantly endure, and make not haste in a time of trouble. Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. And whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. Hey, these scriptures come to life when we start understanding the things that our forefathers went through, man. The scriptures tell us time and time again these things was written so we can have comfort in the scriptures, so that we can understand the scriptures, so we can understand how not to make the same mistakes our forefathers made. And one of the most, most important things that's overlooked is understand that you're going to be tried. Understand that you're going to go through temptations, but understand also that the Most High God dealing with you like a son and it's always a way to get out of those temptations. Come on. What's up, one of y'all brothers? All right, I got, you got one? Uh, God. This is 1 Peter 4, verse 12. Bring it out. out. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, and as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. So we all have to drink of that same cup that uh, Yahweh Shah dealt with. So the, uh, the, the student is not above his master, so we all have to partake of that same cup. Right. right. So not only just the flesh, but you know, you being called a devil, we're teaching wrong doctrines. You know, God loves everybody. Like the Anakin was doing, I mean, the brother was doing. We're not like we're supposed to go through those kind of things. That's how you know we partake as of Christ's suffering. Right? Because it says not to only believe on him, but to suffer as as, as he did. But uh 16 and 1. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 16 and verse 1. Because we 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 deal with these kind of things now, but you have the wicked which are gonna deal with it the same thing Job dealt with, but it's gonna be more horrible because it's gonna be for a punishment. 16 and 1. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, right? Go, go your way. Pour out the vials of wrath of God upon right. the earth. Right. Keep on. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. Right. And there fell a noise of and grievous sword upon the men which had the mark of the beast. Hey, right. and that's the same thing Job had. He had boils, sores, and he said they was oozing with pus. And he said worms, and it, once translation say worms, and one says maggots. But nevertheless. Was there. They was there and they was coming out, man. But go ahead. And upon them which worship his image. And the second angel poured out his bile upon the sea. That's that's it. I just wanted to pull that one about the boils, because at the end of the day, this is how we're gonna determine. Because think about it, you're not supposed to have things like that in your body. And starting off with the pandemic, them putting this juice in your arm. This is this is gonna help partake in the boils and the sores that these, these people are gonna get on them pretty soon. And I'm only bringing this out because if you take that, you finish. You're going to have sores and boils all over your body and you're going in the, you're getting tossed in the lake of fire at the end of the day. But that's a scary thing, man, all because you're afraid of Esau, right? Because Esau is going to come. When he comes, he's going to be coming in like a forceful way. Like you're going to take this or you're going to die, right? And that's when you see who the Lord's chosen is because some he's going to deliver and some has to go through that, you know, as martyrs. But you said you had two. Oh, yeah. God, and this is Sirach chapter 43 and verse 30. Bring it out. It says, When you glorify the Lord, exalt him as much as ye can, for even yet will he far exceed. And when you exalt him, put forth all your strength and be not weary, because we can never go far enough. So, you. So, with that, we want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shah. Like the general always say, never ever forget. Death to America. Death, Death to, to America. America. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.